Hello and welcome back to Mother and Refuge of the End Times. This is the second in our series of videos providing examples from private revelations which support Blessed Mother's request for the Fifth Marian Dogma, the proclamation of her titles of Co-Redemptrix, Advocate, and Mediatrix of all graces. Much work has been done in this area of Mariology from the theologian's point of view. Again, I recommend books by Professors Mark Miravalli and Gloria F. Dodd for further information on the theology supporting this dogma. In this video, we will present three messages which Blessed Mother gave Father Stefano Gobi in 1980 and 1990, in which she proclaimed herself as Mediatrix of Graces and Co-Redemptrix. Father Gobi was an Italian priest whose locutions from Our Blessed Mother between 1973 to 1977 are published in the book To the Priests, Our Lady's Beloved Sons, available from the Marian Movement of Priests in many countries. Let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin, Pray for us who have recourse to you. The first message I'd like to share is number 203, titled, The Work of Co-Redemption, received on the anniversary of the Third Apparition of Fatima, July 13, 1980. Ascent to my plan, beloved sons, and allow yourselves to be formed by your mother. Thus I am able, more and more, to associate you with my maternal work of co-redemption. Jesus is the only Redeemer because He alone is the mediator between God and men. He has, however, willed to take into partnership in His redemptive work all those who have been redeemed by Him, so that the merciful work of His love may shine forth in a greater and more wonderful way. Thus you, who have been redeemed, can cooperate with Him in His redemptive work, He in you, who are so intimately united with Him, so as to form His very mystical body, can gather in your day the fruit of what He accomplished once for all on Calvary. I am for you the perfect model of your cooperation in the redemptive work accomplished by my Son. In fact, as Mother of Jesus, I have become intimately associated with Him in His work of redemption. My presence beneath the cross tells you how my Son has willed to unite His Mother completely to all His great sufferings at the time of His passion and His death for you. If the cross was His scaffold, the pain of my Immaculate Heart was like the altar on which my Son offered to the Father the sacrifice of the new and eternal covenant. As Mother of the Church, I was also intimately associated with Jesus in the accomplishment of His redemptive work, which is carried out in the course of history by offering to all men the possibility of accepting that salvation which He obtained for you at the time of His bloody immolation. Thus, the more numerous they are who attain salvation, the more fully is the masterpiece of His divine love realized. My motherly task is that of helping my children in every way to attain salvation, and today still it is that of cooperating in a very special way in the redemption accomplished by my son Jesus. My role as true mother and co-redemptrix will become manifest to all. I want to carry out this action today through you, my beloved sons. This is why I have wanted to withdraw myself into the desert of your life, where I have set up my safe refuge. In this way, I mold you as a mother so that through you, I may carry out the great work of co-redemption. And so I call you to prayer, to the perfect offering of yourselves, to suffering, to self-immolation. 
I lead you along the way of the cross, and gently I help you to climb Calvary in order to transform you all into sacrificial victims, pleasing to the Father for the salvation of the world. This is the time of my silent action in the desert of your life. I daily work the great prodigy of transforming you more and more, that Jesus crucified may again live in each one of you. When this work of mine is completed, the greatness of the loving plan which I am now carrying out will become apparent to the whole church. My merciful work of co-redemption has now become more necessary and urgent than ever. The task which the Most Holy Trinity has entrusted to me will be acknowledged by all. I will be able to exercise my great power fully so that the victory of my Son Jesus may shine forth everywhere when He will restore through you His glorious reign of love. The second message is number 204, titled Mediatrix of Graces, received on the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, July 16, 1980. I am the Mediatrix of Graces. Grace is the very life of God which is communicated to you. It springs from the bosom of the Father and is merited for you by the Word, who in my virginal womb became man to share with you that same divine life. And for this, he offered himself as a ransom for you, becoming thus the one and only mediator between God and all humanity. From the bosom of the Father, grace, in order to reach you, must therefore pass through the divine heart of the Son, who communicates it to you in his spirit of love. Just as a ray of light which passes through a window assumes its shape, color, and design, so too divine grace merited by Jesus can come to you only through Him. And it is for this reason that it reproduces in you His own image, the very same image which shapes you ever more and more to His own person. Divine life can reach you only in the form of Jesus, And the more this increases in you, the more you are assimilated to Him, in such a way that you can really grow as His little brothers. By means of grace, the Father communicates Himself to you ever more and more, the Son assimilates you, the Holy Spirit transforms you, bringing about a relationship of life with the Most Holy Trinity, which becomes ever increasingly strong and active. Within souls who are in grace, it is the Most Holy Trinity itself which takes up its dwelling place there. This life of grace also has a relationship with your Heavenly Mother. As I am truly the Mother of Jesus and your Mother, my mediation is exercised between you and my Son Jesus. This is the natural consequence of my Divine Motherhood. As the mother of Jesus, I am the means chosen by God by which my Son can reach you. In my virginal womb, this first act of mediation of mine is carried out. As your mother, I was the means chosen by Jesus that through me all of you may reach Him. I am truly the mediatrix of grace between you and my Son Jesus. My task is that of distributing to my little children that grace which flows out from the bosom of the Father, is merited for you by the Son, and is given to you by the Holy Spirit. My task is that of distributing it to all my children according to the particular needs of each one, which the mother is very good at knowing. I am ever carrying out this duty of mine, however, I can carry it out fully only in the case of those children who entrust themselves to me with perfect abandonment. I am above all able to carry it out in respect to you, my favorite sons, who by your consecration have entrusted yourselves completely to me. I am the way which leads you to Jesus. I am the safest and shortest way, the necessary way for each one of you. If you refuse to go along this way, you run the danger of being lost in the course of your journey. Today, many have wished to put me aside, considering me an obstacle in reaching Jesus, 
because they have not understood my function as mediatrix between you and my son. And so never before, as in these present times, are so many of my children running the risk of not being able to reach him. The Jesus whom they meet is often only the result of their own human research and corresponds to their aspirations and desires. He is a Jesus formed according to their measure. He is not Jesus the Christ, the true Son of God and of your Immaculate Mother. Entrust yourselves to me with confidence and you will remain faithful because I will be able to carry out fully my work as mediatrix of graces. I will take you each day along the way of my son in such a way that he may increase in you to his fullness. This is my great work, which I am still carrying out in silence and in the desert. Under my powerful action as mediatrix of graces, you are ever more transformed into Christ, that you may become fit for the task which awaits you. Forward, then, with courage, along the way traced out by your Heavenly Mother. The third message is number 432, titled, The Travail of the New Birth, received on the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows on September 15th. 1990. Our Lady says, Beloved children, today I am associating you in the great suffering of your Immaculate Mother. You are the children of my motherly predilection. You have been chosen by me to form part of my victorious cohort. You are an important part of my plan as mediatrix and co-redemptrix. My son Jesus wanted me beneath the cross to associate my immaculate suffering with all his divine suffering. He wanted to unite my human suffering to his, and he associated me intimately in the mystery of his redemption. Thus he called me to be true co-redemptrix. The fruit of my co-redemption is my spiritual motherhood. Beneath the cross, through the will of my son Jesus, in the cradle of a very great suffering, I became your mother, mother of all the redeemed, mother of the church, and of the entire human race. And I have carried out this maternal function by standing as true mother at the side of all my children during the earthly course of human history. I have not left anyone alone or abandoned. No one has ever been rejected or sent away from me. I have always been close to everyone as a loving and sorrowful mother. I have carried in my heart the sufferings of all. I have carried in my heart the sufferings of the whole church. I have shared in the immense pain of the poor and the outcast, of the sinners and the despairing, of those far away and of the atheists, of the good and of the wicked, of the great and of the small, of the priests and of the faithful, of the suffering and of the sick, of the agonizing and of the dying. I have become the mother of all sorrows. Above all, it is my motherly task to share in the great sufferings of the Church and of all humanity in these days of the purification and of the great tribulation. It is these sufferings which are preparing the new times, the rise of the new era. This is, therefore, the travail of the new birth, and as a mother I am called to the task of begetting today in suffering the new humanity, ready for the meeting with its Lord, who is returned to you in glory. For this reason, my little son, I have wanted you here again in the United States of America to begin a long and wearying journey through many countries, to hold the cenacles of my movement, and to lead all into the safe refuge of my Immaculate Heart. I want you thus to be associated in my motherly work of co-redemption, and I am making you more and more a participant in my great sorrows. Become, therefore, the sign of my motherly presence, and give to everyone the charism of my soothing balm. Give assistance to those who are far away, comfort to the sick, courage to the weak, support to the little ones, grace to the sinners, love to the priests, light to the faithful, hope to the discouraged, and great confidence to all.
You will see the greatest marvels everywhere, because the times of my maternal co-redemption have arrived. Thank you again for your support of Mother and Refuge of the End Times. May the Immaculate Heart of Mary be your refuge. Welcome to Mother in Refuge of the End Times. We are thrilled to be releasing our latest prayer book titled The Most Holy Rosary Prayers and Mystical Meditations of Saints and Seers. The Most Holy Rosary is one of the greatest prayers in the history of the Church. Garnished as it is with the testimony of saints and popes for the last thousand years, the only prayers that could be said to be greater are those of the Mass in the divine office, yet many still seek ways to enter into the deeper mansions of spiritual richness to be found in this devotion. To assist with this process, Mother and Refuge of the End Times has compiled revelations and meditations from some of the most notable and popular Catholic mystics and saints. These mystics were gifted with first-hand revelations by means of visions and apparitions of the life of our Lord Jesus and His Holy Mother. We have selected some writings from these remarkable revelations to assist in the meditation of each of the 20 mysteries of the Holy Rosary. The main mystic meditations featured are St. Padre Pio, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, Servant of God, Don Delindo Rotolo, Servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, Maria Veltorta, and others. In addition, this unique rosary prayer book contains both the Latin and English prayers of the rosary. It has been originally illustrated by our own Catholic religious illustrator with over 23 inspiring illustrations that will surely lift your hearts in prayer and in fervor. This is a rosary prayer book that will surely be a classic. As always, we thank you all for your continued support of our prayer book ministry and our channel. May God bless you and keep you, and may the Immaculate Heart of Mary be your refuge. Amen.